Hey, what's going on, everybody? James here, your ABX audio file. Make sure you stay tuned because we're going to look at some crazy, crazy speakers. Uh, if you guys didn't know, uh, we just got back from Expona. Uh, that was my first time going. Uh, we went with uh, Randy, Cheap Audio Man, and all of his crew. It was a phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal time to hang out with those guys. And I tell you what, I could not have met uh, a more humble, accepting, knowledgeable uh, group of audio files than that crew that Cheap Audio Man's put together. I mean, just amazing people. Uh, <clears throat> it was my first exponent. Didn't know what to expect. I was super, super glad that I got to go over there uh, as a Patreon to Cheap Audio Man and, and hang out with those guys. I stayed in the same motel. We got to hang out every night. We had kind of a, a little get-together every night, did some stuff. Uh, one of the nights, uh, Dan from Emotiva and his whole crew came over. Gashelli Labs came over. Just Audio came over. Um, man, we just had a just had a fantastic time. And uh, I figured I'd just take a minute to run you guys kind of through my experience. Um, you know what what kind of my first Expona was for me. Uh, kind of what it looked like. Some of the crazy stuff that I still don't even even know the names or the price tags to. Uh, but let's check it out. So there is literally my motel room. Uh, this is the rooms that you stay in at uh, when you go when you go rolling around with Cheap Audio Man over there. Uh, nice, nice rooms, big balconies. This is kind of overlooking the area right here. We got to hang out. Um, I think Cheap Audio Man's rooms were right in here. He typically has like two rooms open up. You go hang out every night and chill. I was up on the fourth floor right here. But this whole courtyard was super, super cool. Um, got to chill here and hang out with everybody all three nights. Uh, and we got these little cool aluminum uh, Cheap Audio Man uh, handed out these really, really cool uh, like aluminum credit card things, you know, for everybody. So everybody got one of those. Super neat. There's the La Dolce uh, Audio uh, UA 2.5, I believe, tube amplifier. Beautiful little tube amplifier. Uh, got a lot of magic up in that guy. I need a real sensitive speaker. Uh, I think it's like, I don't know, two and a half or three watts or something, but uh, super cool. So we had that kind of set up in the room. We were messing around with some open baffles. Uh, there's Randy there. We were trying to get it all dialed in. We had two DACs go down. We had power cords. We had cables that were not working. Nobody could get connected to the internet. So we were trying to stream music and have a good old time. It was just a, it was just an absolute madhouse. I think at one point we had like six people in here working on this. So we had Randy in there, uh, really trying to, uh, get this thing set up. You can see the cane tucks with the F 15s there. Uh, we had a good time. Uh, I did get the gold pass. They told me to get the gold pass, which is really cool. You get to kind of check in early, go into this little space. They got snacks, lunches. You get really cool t-shirts and stuff like that. Uh, so that was pretty neat. Uh, first room that I went into was the uh, uh, B&W, kind of their flagship room, if you will. Uh, they had a bunch of Macintosh stuff there. And I have always been a B&W fan, if you've watched any of my stuff in the past. But... Um, I wasn't a fan of these guys for some reason. I, I just felt like, and, and take all of this stuff with a grain of salt because the rooms are crazy, but you know, um, I have those 2007 B&W 604 series threes that I just love. And, uh, I sat in this room and you know, it was okay. Uh, it had some good sound, a little bit thin, the highs on these B&Ws, especially these newer ones. I don't know what's going on there, but there was just a graininess, like a, like a grainy texture to the top end, you know, coming out of those tweeters. I, I didn't really like it. Um, but you know, I mean, I'm sure it sounded, uh, great, but you know, not to me anyway, it was a really cool looking room. Uh, they look really cool and it was nice to see all the Macintosh gear, but, uh, I was not impressed with the sound. I only sat in there for maybe a minute or two. I did go back the next day and check it out. But, uh, of course, they had the big, huge flagship Macintosh system all set up out there with these huge arrays. Uh, it's just madness. Um, of course, it's set up in this big open hall. So, who knows how it really sounds. It sounded okay to me. Um, but if you're trying to sell me that gear and you're standing me in front of that and, and that's what I got to hear, um, I'm not paying the money. But... You know, looks super cool, super iconic. There were a lot of people hanging out there and having fun. Uh, again, there's the big, huge towers, man. It's just mad. It's just, a, it's just absurdity. But uh, second room we went into was these Wilsons. Uh, 
this was the first time that I ever sat in front of a speaker that was like, holy crap, this is audio file right here. The, the clarity, the detail, the dynamics, just the overall sound and amazingness that was coming out of these guys uh, was just mind boggling. Uh, and you don't even want to know the price. I don't know, hundred grand, a couple hundred grand. I don't know. It's ridiculous. But, um, you know, boy, that sound was something like I'd never heard before. And, and I was really, I was really kind of like my jaw drop, you know, as the first real, real system that I heard that was just like, wow, that's what end game sounds like. So that was a super cool experience for me to kind of be able to do that. Uh, we went into another room. They had this turntable. Look at this thing. This guy would grab this. I have a video of it. This guy would grab it and he would like shake it while it was playing. And it doesn't move very fast. It's really slow. But he would move it all around. He'd tap on the sides and he would actually tap on the platter. And you could not even hear it, man. It was insane. I don't even want to know what that thing cost, but that was super cool to see. Uh, this was a pretty cool little thing. We always look for like uh, decoupling and isolation and stuff like that. Um, you know, this solid tech, uh, they have all different kinds of uh, a cool little gadgets. This, this was a little bit kind of like enormous to me. I'm thinking like, yeah, what am I going to put four of these under my turntable or whatever the, the case may be. But hey, man, they look like they work. Uh, if that's your deal, I thought they were pretty impressive. I, I sent them right over to one of our, uh, our um, folks on our Discord uh, they, I knew that they would appreciate that. So that was pretty cool. They got a bunch of different ones. Check them out. I finally got to go in and see the PS Audio stuff. Uh, the F30s. I mean, Jiminy Christmas. You talk about a good sound and speaker. That sound system is insane. Um, I felt like it was a little bit thin, a little bit analytical, but it was just so overwhelming you know, to sit in front of that system and have that sound come at you. And, uh, man, if you are into that audiophile sound, holy crap, that is just insanity. I don't even want to know what the price is, um, but it is super, super cool. And uh, I'm a big fan of PS Audio. I really, uh, I like Paul and, and what he does. Um, I've watched all of his series on kind of like the ancient history of the earth and stuff. And he's kind of into some different stuff. Just came out with a book. Um, but that was really cool to to finally get to go in there. Uh, then we went and we saw these massive like Griffin amps. I was like, holy crap, this could like duel as a coffin. But they had a whole thing set up. There's a picture of me kind of next to it. It was just insane. I mean, that thing, I don't even want to know what it weighs. Forklift, get it in and get it out. Maybe even a crane. I don't know. Um, but it's just, it was crazy to see some of the the levels that these people went to. Um, I can't remember the name of this speaker. I was not impressed at all. I think they were kind of more doing the amps and stuff and the cabling. Um, but I didn't like these speakers. They were they were just really like kind of dull, super warm, uh, really bassy. Uh, I didn't find much clarity and stuff to them. Maybe it was just track dependent. But um, if you know what those are, uh, comment in the chat. But I was not impressed by those. Uh, again, these ones too, I don't even know what these are. These were really super cool tube amps though. They were kind of like built on the side, kind of like vertical narrow. And then the tubes were kind of in top, uh, really, really cool sound and system. They had like these passive radiators and stuff on the side and this whole line array of stuff. And I think that's a, um, like a, like a, a ribbon tweeter or like an AMT or something right there. I don't know exactly what it is, but very clean and, and, um, accurate sounding system. Uh, that was kind of cool. Really didn't draw me in or anything. Uh, oh, hey, that's what I'm talking about. There's Ben, good buddy, man. He really took took me around his, you know, took me under his wing, kind of dialed me in with the whole cam crew, got me uh, hanging out with everybody. Uh, he's just a really good dude. Uh, had a super fun time with him. Uh, this room, I can't remember what these were. I was not impressed by these. Uh, just very kind of, I don't know, just overall. Just sounded kind of a normal speaker system, and the price was like, oh, man, I don't know. That's cool, but maybe you do you. <laughs> I don't remember what these speakers were, but this one, I, I just kept thinking. I was looking at this thing, and I was like, why do they have a belt buckle on their driver? And so those are like little ribbon tweeters right there on either side, and they got this kind of diffuser thing. I don't know exactly what it does, but um, it sounded okay. wasn't anything to write home about. Uh, just some other like godly expensive high end speakers. I don't remember what these were. Um, typically if I don't remember, it was really kind of not my cup of tea, but, uh, just some really amazing gaudy built stuff. Like just let's put bells and whistles all over this stuff and 
really just see what extremes we can take this to. Uh, the Focal Room, I was kind of actually excited to, to listen to this room. Uh, we went in and the guy was giving us kind of a rundown. Um, and those, those speakers on the back that are like attached to the wall... They were like twenty thousand dollars, and this guy was just bragging them up. He was like, "Oh yeah, twenty grand for these things." Bada 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 bada, and then he fired those things off. I had never heard anything in my life sound like hot garbage like those things did. We didn't even get to hear the uh, the uh, the main focals till later, um, and they were okay. They're good. I mean, if you like that focal sound, that, that's for you. But um, you know, buyer beware. Of course, all room dependent. I'm sure, but they had a pretty good setup in there. But those wall um, speakers, man, that just sounded like, ugh, I don't know. I think the Sony uh, SC, S5s or whatever would probably do a better job. <laughs> I'm not even lying either. Anyway, that was super cool. Uh, oh, then we went to the Dyne Audio. You guys know that I'm kind of a Dyne Audio fan. Carson in our Discord kind of got me hooked up with them. Um, I can't remember what these were. I think they were the Confidence... 50s or something like that it was kind of one step down from their flagship these things were phenomenal very well-rounded speaker all put together you know there wasn't anything gleaming out a lot of times you'll go in and those high-end speakers like the highs will just be overpowering or it'll be like overpowering bass or or heavy mids nice thing about the dyne audios is they are just very very musical i mean you sit down in front of these speakers right here same with my m at 50s and same with the uh the ones that carson has at his house i can't remember we'll we'll look at them later but um i don't know these are something like 40 grand or something like that maybe for this pair 50 grand for this pair uh and they were really good i mean if you like that dyne audio overall just very very musical sound great dynamics i mean you talk about a well-rounded presentation and notice the tubes there were tubes everywhere i almost didn't go into a room that wasn't ran by tube amplifiers so that was really uh interesting to see the saturation of uh tube amplifiers tube power uh, and then also Cobas in almost every room. They all had these little signs that set set up there that said, you know, audition by Cobas. There was a little bit of title that I saw, but I would say probably 80, 85% of the rooms were all um, uh, Cobas. Uh, this Joseph Audio, this is another manufacturer that just blew me away. Of course, way, way expensive. You know, most of us aren't ever going to get into something like this, but... Uh, these Joseph Audio speakers were just phenomenal. They were so, so well-rounded. Just great presentation. Just hit all the marks, man. Smooth, clean highs. Good, defined mids. Really nice, solid, tight bass. I do not want to know the price tag on those, but I was super impressed by those speakers. They were really, really great. I actually went back a couple times uh, and listened. I don't remember what these were. Uh, but they looked really cool. I like that kind of wood grain on the side with the with the white front baffle and all the arrays, and then you've got the um, the woofers on the side. Um, really interesting type of speaker, kind of a really tall sound stage. They stage kind of really well. Um, but man, I'd hate for one of those speakers to go out. Which one is it? <laughs> Anyways, those were cool. Oh, the Magnapans. Uh, first day I went in and listened to the new Magnapan uh, LRS-1, I believe. They didn't have the flagships going, which are behind. I didn't get to see those till the next day. But um, first day I went in, I didn't like the LRS+. Plus. And maybe it was just the music or the mood. But I walked out of there and, and I went out into the hallway. And I was like, man, I don't know. That's That, that just really wasn't good. Well, one of the reps were standing out there. And he was like, well, what didn't he like about it? And I think Ben was with me at the time. Uh, and so we kind of talked to him a little bit about what our, our thoughts were. And I kind of felt bad. You know, he was just a young kid. He was like the service manager or whatever. And he was a really, really nice guy. And, and so I thought, yeah, you know what? I'm going to go back tomorrow and try to give it another shot. And I did. Uh, and the next day they had a, somebody else in there and playing different music. And they were fantastic. Those LRS pluses. Uh, plenty of bass. Great vocals. Just really clean. Soundstage really nice. Uh, that was a really good speaker, and for a thousand bucks, that's a super bang for buck. I mean, a thousand bucks for a pair. Um, so anyway, if that is your thing, uh, we're actually going to be getting a pair to review. I ended up talking to them, and they're going to donate a pair to us that we're going to review and then raffle off in our Discord. So that being said, if you are not in our Discord, make sure you check the links below and get down in there. Uh, because uh, you know we're the only uh, 501c3 nonprofit charity reviewer. 
100% of our proceeds go directly to uh, support youth musical programs across uh, North America. Uh, that's what we do. We donate every penny. This audio is just a secondary piece of what our mission is. Uh, and that's to raise money for youth musical programs. So if you're interested in those MagnaPan uh, LRS Pluses, make sure you get in our Discord because we're going to be raffling them off in there. Um, I really like this Roxanne gear. Uh, this picture, I, I don't remember what the speakers were, but I did, you know, they were okay. Uh, but I really like the look of this Roxanne gear, this kind of like uh, coal gray, just really industrial kind of look. Um, I really enjoyed that. I would like to get some of their gear. Uh, I'm going to have to look into them. Probably super expensive, so I'll probably never get it. But anyway, it was fun to talk about it. <laughs> uh, oh, man, I got to meet my idol, Andrew Jones. How cool was that? My man. I've had everything that he's done, basically, since he's been with Pioneer uh, to now. Um, hopefully, we're going to get a, a set of Source Point 10s to check out here eventually once the dust settles. I'm small guy on the block, so I get everything last. But I'm going to reach out to MoFi and uh, give him our pitch as far as a, a charity reviewer. And see if they won't uh, won't hook us up a little bit. But those things, the 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 source point tens, I think it was just the room. They were a little bit bass heavy. The source point eights sounded way better. Uh, but I think those source point tens just need a lot more breathing room. Uh, but man, if you like that coaxial driver, that thing was phenomenal. That is a fantastic uh, speaker for the price. And I think at the show. I think they were doing the Source Point 8s for like 2400 out the door or something. Uh, no tax, no shipping or something like that. So if you got hooked up on that deal, man, good for you. Let me know. Um, so that was pretty cool. Uh, we went and visited Gashelli. Uh, they're going to send us some stuff. I sent them an email the other day. They're interested in our nonprofit and, and, and want to be part of the conversation. So I'm hoping that... Uh, we get one of these in to review kind of once they come out. Uh, this is their new integrated. They were running a set of Source Point 10s as well. Uh, and that thing was fire, man. That sounded so good. Uh, I believe they had the uh, yeah, they had the Converse up there. Uh, there's the Source Point 10s in their room. That was a phenomenal room. Uh, you talk about bang for buck, man. These, uh, I think they're Q Acoustics 5040s or 4050s. I can't remember. But anyway, they're like, I don't know, 700 something a pair. This was a phenomenal sounding speaker. I mean, the, 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 it wasn't super bass heavy. You'd probably want a little sub or something with them, although they did the work. Uh, but I just remember the clarity and the dynamics and, and just the presentation being really, really nice. Um, I thought to myself when I sat down, I was like, oh God, that's a good sounding speaker. I wonder how much that guy costs. And then come to find out, it was actually, you know, pretty budget. $1,500, $1,600 bucks or something for a pair. So uh, that was super, super cool. Uh, of course, the JBLs, man. I went into this room, and I don't know. I just, I think JBL gets kind of a bad little rap as far as audiophile. Maybe like more pro-level gear, you know, like concert type stuff. But I'm telling you, man, I sat in front of this system, and they just rocked the show. There is just an American like classic rock vibe that comes out of this thing, man. It is just fun to listen to. Uh, I kept going back for more. I went back in there a couple times, uh, even the next day and, uh, really got me some more of that JBL. So that was super cool. And I think they were super cheap too. I think they were, I don't know, under a couple grand, maybe a pair 1700 a pair i'm not sure i may be wrong but I, I i remember feeling like damn that's that's a value so um i might see if i can't get a pair of those because i really enjoyed that speaker i would own that speaker uh, and that's not outlandishly insane uh here's the famous steve guttenberg's uh panels that he gave up everything on the planet for uh, i listened to him on day one and i really wasn't a fan and again i think it was just the room or the music but uh, a lot of people were playing a lot of bass-heavy stuff. A lot of rooms were playing really too loud. Um, but I'm a big open baffle guy. If you haven't checked out in our Discord, we're building open baffles right now. We're working with La Dolce Audio. Uh, we're coming up with a group open baffle speaker. We've got the drivers done. We've got the compression tweeters done. Um, I think they're finishing up crossover stuff right now. Uh, we're, we're getting baffle designs that people can use and... Um, I can tell you from what I heard in that room with those baffles, my open baffles in my room sound better, uh, way better, way more dynamic, way more clear, way better presentation. Um, 
but I really think it's just the room. I think that those are a better baffle. I'm not trying to say that my baffles are better. I'm just saying with those baffles in that room did not sound as good as my baffles in my room. Um, and I did go back the next day and it did sound a little bit better. They were playing some different music and I sat in there for a little bit uh, longer, kind of let the sound sink in a little bit. And uh, I left there pleased. I mean, I don't know if it's a, you know, what are they, $9,000 or not? I don't know what they are, but they're expensive. Um, and, and, I, and I look at stuff like that and I'm like, damn, I could just build that. <laughs> So anyway, we do have a couple people in our Discord right now that are that are in the process of building a baffle, almost just like that, panelized. But um, anyway, um, good sounding speaker. I wish I could hear it in a different spot. Man, don't even get me started on Boris. I mean, these guys, Borenson, Borenson. I can't, I can't, I suck at saying that name. These folks in Denmark, man. There were three rooms. There were three rooms. There were three rooms at Expona that blew my mind. And it was all, all three of them were next level hi-fi. Hi it was the uh, X3 towers. It was these, um, it was these uh, bookshelves. 60 grand, by the way, I believe, for these bookshelves uh, and their system. But I am telling you, I was searching around that room for a subwoofer, I could not find it anywhere. It was absolutely insane. I mean, this these things are just absurdly good. And um, I mean, it's just a little like four and a half inch driver or something and like a ribbon tweeter. I don't know what kind of tweeter it is, but um, some kind of metally, you know, folded ribbon or AMT or something like that. I'm not good enough to know that stuff. But at 60K, I was like, damn, that's pretty steep. Uh, but you know, is what it is. There's the back of them. Really, really beautiful speaker, man. I'm telling you, that was one of the best rooms uh, that I heard besides their flagship M3s. Uh, here's their gear. Their big sales pitches. You get their, you get their speakers. Uh, you get their integrated. You get their power amps. You get all the bottom stuff. The bottom two shelves, I believe, that's all their power supply, power conditioner stuff. Uh, and they literally tell you, and it could just be a sales pitch, but. Um, I asked the guy, I was like, well, what if I just bought the bookshelves and just hooked up my stuff? And he goes, nah, you wouldn't get that magic. you got to have the whole system. So, um, I don't know, 150 grand or something like that, a couple hundred grand for that, <laughs> that system. But it will blow your mind. Uh, absolutely beautiful speaker. Here's a little side shot of it. Uh, I was super impressed. I'm in, I'm in love with Next Level Hi-Fi, everything that they do. Uh, someday I hope I can afford it. Uh, the, the, uh, Linkwitz, these things were interesting, kind of a hybrid open baffle. Uh, they have two drivers inside that box that kind of face each other, um, for the kind of the, the, the low end. These things sounded f fantastic. I would love, I would love to have a set of these. These were probably in all of the open baffle ish, uh, type speakers, uh, at the show. These were absolutely my favorite. These things were stunning. I loved these. Uh, there's the back of them. Uh, if you look at it, check this out. Look at the look at the tweeter. Ba ba ba, mid ba ba ba, all the stuff, and then you spin it around and it's up high. So they've got like this tweeter on the back, because if you look at the front panel, the other tweeter is like right there facing out that way. So I don't know how those uh, match up and integrate with each other, but it's not on the other side. If you look at this picture, see how it's down low here, and then this is blank. And then if you switch to this picture, you can see it up here, and then the front one would be like right there. So I don't know what the relationship is uh, in those two, but anyway, beautiful, beautiful speaker. Really, really like those guys. Uh, sounded good. We was down hanging out with Just Hi-Fi a little bit. Uh, always got some cool stuff down there, man. I mean, if you're into the vintage, that guy, uh, that guy will hook you up. Of course, you know show prices are a little bit uh, are a little bit nutty, but. Uh, oh, we went over and visited Project. They had a, <laughs> a gimmicky little yellow submarine. I'm a big fan. I grew up on that album when I was a kid, watched the movie and stuff. and So I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, we went and hung out with Dan and Emotiva crew. Here he is doing a big raffle. Uh, we did end up winning $400 uh, in Emotiva bucks uh, when we hung out with them at the Cheap Audio Man uh, event. I think it was Saturday night. Uh, we ended up winning $400 emo bucks and we're going to raffle those off in our discord too. So make sure you get in that discord. I'm telling you, we got a lot of good stuff going on in there. 
Uh, Dan and his crew were, were super, super cool. You can see him just jumping up on his subwoofer there. He's like, yeah, this is a good advertisement for strength. Uh, there's his wife, Kathy, all the crew. Uh, if you guys didn't know, I do uh, admin um, Dan uh, Dan's uh, Emotiva Facebook page. We've got a couple people in our Discord who helped me moderate that. So uh, I am a little bit biased to Emotiva just because I have such a relationship with them. So <laughs> if you hear me bragging up Emotiva a bunch, um, I apologize. Just I roll. Uh, this was really cool. You know, we went into these uh, this treehouse audio lab stuff. A beautiful set of open baffles. Uh, they sounded pretty good. Again, I think it's just a room. You know, the thing that we know about open baffles is just how room dependent they are. Uh, and there's not a lot that you can do in these little gutted out motel rooms. But um, they looked really, really cool. They sounded okay. Uh, I would like to get them set up in a proper room and, and really give them an audition just because I love the look of those things. Uh, and I can't remember what they were. Super spendy, but anyway, super cool. Uh, kind of a three-way deal. They had that like little high-end high, high -end tweeter up there, a little mid-range, kind of a paper cone. Looks like it was almost handmade. Uh, and then a big old driver down below. Oh, the MBI room. Oh, my God. We went in this MBI room, man. You have never heard soundstage like this before. I don't know if I like the $90,000 a piece for the speakers. I got in the sweet spot of this system, and I listened to it for a while. And it is a glorious soundstage. I mean, it is just massive. Like, everything disappears. The soundstage just kind of seems to be all around you. Everything's floating through the room. You would think that the center imaging kind of gets lost a little bit. But when you're in the sweet spot, it's got a really nice center imaging. But there's just kind of this like hollowness or expansiveness to it that after about 10 minutes, it's kind of like, okay, I've heard that. That's cool. A little bit gimmicky. Um, but, you know, I guess if you bought it and your wife killed you, you'd have a coffin right there because look at those amplifiers. Those things are like five feet long. <laughs> uh, you don't even want to know. That stuff's insane. But it was really impressive. Cool, cool to hear. Um, this was another one of my favorite rooms. I believe... And I, I wish I knew. I'm, I'm drawing a blank right now. But this room was phenomenal. These speakers were just amazing. And I think this was... I think they remember saying this was $40,000 for the entire uh, system. Which, uh, you know, considering some of the stuff that we heard at Exponent this year, that is an absolute value. Uh, in my mind, I was blown away by this system. I really, really liked this system. Uh, if I had 40k and I was a rich guy, I would have no problem dropping that 40k on this system. Although, I will tell you that there's a system that did way better for half the price. We'll get to that. Uh, oh yeah, this is at the cam event, chilling with uh, Cheap Audio Man, Dan, the Emotiva crew. We're back at the hotel here. This is where he came over and did just a big, huge giveaway. This guy was giving away like thousand dollar gift cards and stuff, man. I'll tell you what the. The relationship that Cheap Audio Man built with Emotiva uh, is just a beautiful thing. And they really, really help each other out. And uh, just what a great company, man. I love these guys. Uh, here's all of our crew I was hanging out with. This is the Cheap Audio Man folks. You can see me on the left there. Uh, we had such a great time hanging out together. Uh, here's, a couple, here's a few peeps from the Discord. We got Nick P., Nick Sims, John. We're hanging out. Nick brought a bunch of gear to set up in the motel room. Uh, we were going to set up a good system, and we just couldn't couldn't get it going right, man. So we just ended up drinking beer together. <laughs> it was a great time. It was awesome to meet those guys. Super, super cool people. Uh, oh, there's the 400 bucks we won from Emotiva, uh, which, again, we're going to be raffling off in our uh, Discord, so make sure you get down there. How are we looking? 28 minutes? Okay, we're going to crush through this stuff. Um, yeah, there's a little picture of my weirdo ass uh, heading over. I think that was day two running over there. Uh, you know, me sporting Cobas. I did meet Dave Solomon in the elevator. Talked to David Solomon. Super, super cool dude. Uh, we had a good little chat. It was pretty great. Oh, the Dovedales. Woo! I'm telling you, them Dovedales were fresh, man. That was a nice speaker. I mean, a little pricey. You know, what are they, five, seven grand or something like that? Uh, a little pricey, but man, I'm telling you what, that was a nice, clean sound. I would not have a problem owning those speakers. Uh, yeah, I got to meet my man, my man, Andrew Jones. I told him about all of our nonprofit charity. He told me to get a hold of him, uh, see if we could work something out. So I'm going to be reaching out to MoFi, see if we can't do something. Uh, I went into the BMWs. I will tell you, I liked this. These are the seven series. 
Uh, I think they're the Series 3 or Series 4. Simple, nice little setup. This one actually sounded really good. I liked this room much better than the 800 series and all the Macintosh gear. And I don't remember what the integrated and stuff was, but this room was by far uh, better sounding to me. A much more well-rounded presentation, but still a little graininess on that top end. Just uh, just kind of B&W. Oh, the, the Paradigm Heritage, uh, Heritage or something like that. or um, I'm drawing a blank. Something 40. Ugh, I'm freaking out. Uh, super awesome system, and they come with this sub. Uh, oh, the Founder 40s. Yeah, dude, this thing, this system kicked ass, man. That was a really, really nice system. That sub was super tight. Those speakers were just killing it. They were just killing it. Uh, again, the Magna Pans, I, I went back in the second day. That's when I actually talked to the folks. Uh, met my buddy Paul, PS Audio. Super cool to meet him. Very, very humble guy. When I told him what we do here at uh, ABX Audio File and the charity, he looked at me and he said, anything you need, you reach out to me anytime and uh, we'll help you out. Now, I'm sure that doesn't mean sending me a pair of F30s to review, but I'm hoping he can maybe kick in, you know, a little donation or something or help us, you know, give us something to raffle off or something in the group. But uh, this is the Alien Speaker. I don't remember the name of it. Uh, it sounded okay. It's a hybrid. I think those were powered subs in the bottom of it. Uh, sounded good for what it is, but I don't know if it's worth the price. Beautiful speaker, though. Hey, what's up, Carson? My man. We got, I finally got to meet Carson. He's in our Discord. Uh, he came out on uh, Saturday and hung out with me and Ben. Then we went to his house afterwards. And he's got a beautiful set of Dyn Audios. Uh, ran into Nemo. Had a good conversation with Nemo. Uh, he was just strolling around, man. So we hooked up with him and, and chatted for a while. He's a really cool dude. Straight Southern California. You know, hey, bro, he's just all laid back, man. You know what I mean? You know what I'm talking about, bro? <laughs> oh, I love that guy. That was super cool. We had some good conversations. Um, we message a little bit uh, back and forth and stuff. You know, we kind of have uh, similar people in our discords. Uh, we have members that kind of bleed over. Uh, Emotiva's new DAC. Uh, they're going to send that out to me to review. I have sent an email to Nick uh, with Emotiva yesterday. Hopefully we can get this uh, XDA3 differential reference DAC. I can't remember what chip they use, uh, but I'll update you guys. I didn't get to hear it, but it was super cool. Uh, this was a cool little open baffle that I saw. It was all plexiglass, just single driver. And then he had these big flares on it, these big like horn things. And it sounded fantastic, man. I'm like, you got these things set up on concrete in the middle of a freaking like swap meet. And uh, I was standing there like, wow, that sounds really good. So that was interesting. Uh, oh, here's the uh, Borison uh, flagship M3. These are absolutely mind-blowing uh, speakers. I have never in my life heard anything sound as good as these. It is just it's the only speaker that has ever made my hair on my arm stand up when I wasn't in the room. When that music started playing in that room, my hair just went boop, just straight goosebumps across the entire body. And then when we left the room, Carson and I were talking about it again. And I literally got goosebumps again, just thinking back to the experience. It was out of this world, man. Um, but you know, hundred and some thousand dollars a piece. I, I don't even know if they're available yet. I think it's the M3. I don't even know if they have them. Oh yeah, there's the goosebumps. <laughs> I'm sitting right there. I had to take a picture. I was like, oh shit. <laughs> uh, again, the Dyne Audios. We went back and checked those out. Oh, it was the Confidence 50. 33 grand a pair. Uh, absolute value, I think, um, for what those speakers provide. Just beautiful, beautiful speaker. Awesome sounding. One of the most real speakers. I think these were the Perlis... Dean Stein thing. I can't remember. Somebody was asking me about them. Uh, these were good. I didn't like them as much as the uh, Borisons, but uh, they were pretty good. Oh, this is where Nick Nick and I got stuck in the elevator. <laughs> we're literally, the elevator stuck. You could see the doors open right there. Uh, we were going up. We got stuck in between three and four. Nick started having a full panic attack. He was getting on the ground nick p we were all freaking out it was hot in there we were just like oh my god and not only that but it has the windows on it so it like uh uh you know everybody's just staring at you <laughs> so we literally had to force the door open and crawl out it was super cool 
Uh, oh, here we're over at Carson's now. Uh, we went over to Carson's that evening. He's got, I think these are the Confidence 50s. There's kind of the tear down. Uh, we went over to his house and listened. It was a phenomenal evening. He broke out the old uh, early 2000 uh, Polk LSI 9 bookshelves. Phenomenal speaker. Literally could be the end game for some people. Uh, you can get them for four or 500 bucks used all over the place. Pick yourself up a set of those. Do yourself a favor. Beautiful room. Huge Emotiva fan. He's got such a great setup, man. We had a great time. Barbecued. Him and his wife. Just awesome hospitality. Me and Ben went over there and hung out. It was just fantastic. Uh, there's me being a ham. Uh, oh, there's those speakers. Uh, Alta Audio. That, that, that's, that's the ones that was forty grand for the set. Beautiful. Another set of Open Baffle. These were pretty cool. Uh, uh, Wathen? Wathen? Um, I think they had the deckware tube amp right there. It was pretty cool. Um, it, really, really awesome, man. And two big drivers, and then they had kind of this electrostatic folded ribbon AMT tweeter. I don't know what they are, uh, but it was really cool. Really awesome to see. That was probably one of the best sounding open baffles that I heard at the show. I really, really liked those. Um, kind of looks similar to my baffle, just single driver, but that big. Uh, again, there they are. Really cool. Oh, yeah. I don't even want to know what this is. I thought these sounded kind of... I don't know. They were great for vocals. Again, it was probably the room. They were stuck in a, a, a little room. But anyway, they were a cool speaker. I did get to hear the Klipsch Heritage. Wasn't a fan. Uh, again, could have just been room. But I don't know. Just kind of thin and grainy. And, um, you know, probably just room. I mean, they sounded good. I just don't know if they're worth that money good. But, you know, uh, if you're a Klipsch individual... Oh, man, I don't remember what these speakers were. These were a weird speaker. They got these, like, reverse drivers on them right there. They sounded really good. Look at those power cables. <laughs> it was okay. I thought it was pretty cool. Uh, I went and checked out the Martin Logan room. Uh, I wasn't impressed with these. I got to tell you, they were a little bassy, a little muddy. Again, it was probably the room. You know, it was like muddy bass and then just cringy clear coming over the top of it. You know, try to put some frosting on it. But uh, wasn't a fan. It sounded good. It's just... You know, I expected a lot more. That was my first time actually hearing Martin Logan's. Uh, and I think they had their biggest set in there. Uh, these Raz, I think these are called Raz. Dude, this is my favorite freaking room besides the Borison uh, X3s. This this room was so, so good. Uh, you got to have these powers, you know, the amp. that You can't just run the amp. You have to have these, um, I don't know, they supply the power to it somehow. And you, you can't just have that amp. You got to have both of them. But that speaker was probably one of the funnest uh, speakers I've ever heard. That is, I would love to have a set of those. Uh, I was really digging that room. As you can see, I was digging it. They got a bunch of pictures of it. Uh, let's see. Uh, I don't remember what those were. I think those were the KLHs. Those were freaking phenomenal. Oh, here's me and the uh, uh, MagnaPan folks. Uh, hopefully they'll be sending us those. They gave me a hat. Hopefully we're getting a set of LRSs. Oh, there's the uh, uh, F20s. Uh, beautiful speaker, man. That's a little more my style. It, there was a little more life to that for some reason for me. Um, I don't know, just smaller speaker, more power or something, doing something differently. But uh, I thought those sounded a little bit better than the uh, other ones. Um, anyway, there's some of my swag I got. Bought a bunch of vinyl from Acoustic Sounds. Chilling there at the end of the day. Um, yeah, it was just a really good time, you know, but at the end of the day, man, it was just all about friends. It was all about networking, about meeting new people. Somebody said, Randy's me and Randy are brothers. <laughs> uh, it was just a fantastic, fantastic show. Uh, I had a great time. Um, I hope you all enjoyed that little run through of my Expona. Uh, we're going to be doing the Seattle, uh, audio show here, June 23rd through the 25th. Uh, if you're in the PNW, hit me up. Uh, make sure you check out all the links in the Discord. And, um, hey, man, I appreciate you guys. Love what we're doing. Uh, thanks for everything. we got a bunch of Patreons now. We're doing really good. We're making donations. We're starting to get some traction with this nonprofit thing. And uh, I just appreciate every single one of you. And have a fantastic day. Later.